Hello friends, this video on system of particles and rotational motion part 17 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now let us talk about center of gravity. Since we are talking about equilibrium, so it is good to talk about the center of gravity. Because we have also spoken about the center of mass, the concept of center of mass is now clear to you. And also we have talked about the center for mechanical and uh, for mechanical equilibrium. Just now we talked about the principles of levers as well. So it is good to talk about the center of gravity as well along with this topic. Right. So what is your center of gravity? It is basically a point where the total gravitational torque on the body is zero. So when I talk of center of gravity, I would again like to cite the example of something, let, let us say any object which you try to balance with your finger. What happens? There is a gravitational pull always being exerted on that object because of which it tends to fall on the ground. Right. So when that net gravitational torque on the body is zero, that means when you place your finger exactly at the point where the total gravitational torque is zero, then you see that the object is in equilibrium. So center of gravity is that point where the total gravitational torque on the body is zero. So at the center of gravity, there is no rotation involved of the body. Right. So for this, you can take this example, as I mentioned. Now, if you do not place your finger exact, at the exact point, if you move your finger even a little, what happens? The disc starts toggling. Right. So it is no more balanced. It starts toggling and it tends to fall down. Sometimes it toggles on the right hand side, sometimes it toggles on the left hand side and so on. Right. So that, that's what keeps happening. So now let us see how center of gravity is related to the center of mass concept. So let us consider this object. So this disc let us consider. So this disc itself is also made up of several number of particles m1, m2, m3 and so on. Now let us assume that the total mass of this disc is capital M. So what would be the net force or the net weight of the disc which is being attracted towards the or the gravitational force with which it is pulled towards the surface of the earth that is nothing but mg right so mg would be the force with which it is pulled towards the earth so there would be a reaction force r in the opposite direction so for this body to be in equilibrium mg should be equal to r right now what is this m this m is nothing but sum of the masses of the particles which constitute the system so this is equal to r so under this situation we say that the net force acting on the body is equal to zero now there will be torque due to each of the forces m1g m2g m3g and so on like for each of these particles there will be a force acting towards the center of the earth that is m1g m2g m3g and so on now each of these forces will give rise to a torque right now if the net torque so if net torque is equal to zero then the disc will be balanced but if the net torque is not equal to zero in that case what will happen it will tilt and fall down right so that means it will not be in equilibrium so this net torque what what does this net torque do actually the net torque actually balances the gravitational force and therefore this torque is known as gravitational torque right so the net torque which we are talking about here why does where does it come from the net torque comes from the contribution from each of the particles it comes from the weight of each of these particles and this force on each of these particles is due to the gravity of the earth this m1g m2g m3g what is this these are all because of the gravity of the earth and because of these forces torque comes into picture so that is why this torque is known as the gravitational torque right so the gravitational torque tau g can be written as the sum of the torque from each of the particles now this can be written as ri cross 
M I G because torque is defined as R cross F. So F in this case will be M1 G, M2 G, M3 G and so on. So we can write it as M I into G. So now if we want this to be in a balanced condition, so this should be equal to 0. So this implies that G into summation of M I R I should be equal to 0. So this implies that summation of M I R I should be equal to 0. So this is the condition for which the net gravitational torque will be equal to 0. Now the points for which this equation holds true is known as the center of gravity. So center of gravity is the point at which the net gravitational torque is 0. And your net gravitational torque will be 0 only if this condition is true. That is summation of mi ri is equal to 0. So there will be a point on this disk where the sum of the product of mass and position vector of each of the particles of the systems will be equal to 0. So that point is known as the center of gravity. Now if we say that the value of g is same at all points which we generally assume then we can say that the center of gravity always coincides with our center of mass. So what? how do we define center of gravity? Center of gravity is defined as that point for which the net gravitational torque is equal to 0 which implies that this condition is true. So points where this condition is true is center of gravity. Right? So what did we conclude from our discussion? Center of gravity coincides with center of mass if G is uniform throughout the body. That means if the value of acceleration due to gravity does not change. Now we generally assume that the value of acceleration due to gravity on the surface of the earth is the same. So in that case we can say that center of gravity is coincides with Thank you. Please visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thank you once again.